Let's talk speed and how you can edit faster in DaVinci Resolve. And just like in coding, anytime you do something once in DaVinci Resolve, the goal is to never have to set it up again. So let's talk about some ways that you can speed up your workflow, save some templates, and just make your life easier when it comes to editing. And the first tip is I think a method that a lot of people sleep on within DaVinci Resolve. If you've come over from Premiere or Final Cut, something that you may find difficult initially is saving your sizing and positioning templates. Let me show you what I mean. When I go about recording my tutorials, this is what it looks like. I actually have two screens. So I've got myself looking goofy on top and then my desktop recording on the bottom. Now, when I go to edit this, what I would have to do is I would have to resize my face cam and then do the same thing for the bottom, right? And I would have to do that for every project. But what we can do is we can set up some adjustment clips that save this property for us so that we can use them every time. Now over here in my media pool, you'll see I have a bin or a folder in DaVinci Resolve that's called cam plus monitor multicam. And if I open this, you'll see I have four generators inside here. These are adjustment clips that I've saved with specific properties attached to them that I can copy and paste to my video. So what I can do is if I have my video file saved down here, I can drag and drop say the first adjustment clip, which is the monitor clip. And if I click on this clip over in the inspector tab, I have zoom position and crop properties already pre-saved. Now all I have to do is transfer these properties over to my video recording. So with my adjustment clip selected, I can hit control C, go over to my video file, and I can either right click and hit paste attributes, or I can use the shortcut alt V. And now I can select the properties I want to transfer over. So I can change the zoom position and crop and hit apply. And now I have my monitor recording all size. So again, if I want to bring in my cam, what I can do is I can duplicate this video file by holding down the alt key and dragging up. And now I can drag in my second adjustment clip over here in the media pool that says cam into the timeline and do the exact same thing. So again, I can click on this adjustment clip, hit control C, go over to the video file and hit alt V paste my properties, and now I have my cam. Where this becomes really powerful is if you work with a specific client or you have a specific format that you're usually working with, what you can do is go over to your effects tab, go over to the effects submenu and drag in an adjustment clip. And we can use this adjustment clip basically as our own molding tool to do whatever we wanna do. So let's say for instance, I wanna save a, a color correction to this. So I can go to my adjustment clip, go to the color tab, change whatever you want. So let's say, I don't know, we crank up the saturation, add some insane contrast. And now I have these color properties saved to my adjustment clip. So now if I wanted to, again, apply those color properties to my video, I can hit control C on the adjustment clip, alt V, and instead of changing the sizing and crop properties, I can paste the color correction and boom, there we go. Things like this make adjustment clips extremely powerful in DaVinci. Now your question is, that's great for that timeline, but how do we save it so that we can use it whenever we want? It's really easy. All you gotta do is drag your adjustment clip from the timeline into the media pool. Rename it, whatever you would like. So let's say color correction. Now that it lives in your media pool, I can drag and drop that down. And again, we have those saved. Now this works great for this project, but how do we carry it over to any other project that we wanna work on? And that takes us to tip number two. Now tip number two is going to be to use your power bins. Now you may have heard of power bins at one point or another, but let me show you why they are so dang useful when it comes to editing. If you've never used them before or you don't know where they live, they're gonna be in your media pool over here in the upper left-hand corner and they live in this left column. If you don't see this left column, go ahead and click this collapse icon up top in the top left. And if you don't see your power bins over here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is in newer versions of DaVinci Resolve, go to the upper right-hand corner where these three dots are, click them and then hit show power bins. In essence, power bins are a folder structure within DaVinci Resolve that transfer universally across every single one of your projects. And what that means is if you save something 
or add something to your power bins, you can access it on any project. So say for instance, if I wanted to, I could take our new color correction adjustment clip drag it into our power bins folder. And now if I were to go ahead and open up a random new project, I can go over to my power bins and you'll see that our color correction generator is in our power bins. And I would say there was a couple of reasons within this tip specifically that make this really powerful. The first is for just like we mentioned, like we can set up and save our sizing position, whatever kind of templates we want to for a given project in our power bins. So if I were to go to my power bins before I actually started recording this video, I went to my project presets folder and I dragged and dropped in this project templates into our master media pool. And if I open that, it has all of my adjustment clips ready to go so I can set up my videos quickly. And you can apply the same principle to basically anything that you would normally save to the media pool in DaVinci Resolve. So if I go back to my power bins, go to my project presets folder, and I go to my long form YouTube preset, I've got a couple folders already set up here. If I were to drag and drop those into my master media pool, and I were to expand my audio folder and go to my sound effects tab, I have some sound effects already pre-saved ready for me to go to YouTube. So if you edit gameplays or vlog type videos or whatever you edit, and there's a group of sound effects that you normally use for that style of video, you can save those to your power bins and instead of relocating them and dragging them into your folder every single time you go to edit, there they are, ready to go. Anytime you set up an effect or a template on the edit page that you wanna be able to reuse, power bins. The only thing that kind of makes this tricky sometimes is remembering to save your effects in the power bins and I am a repeat offender of this. <laughs> What you should do is anytime you finish a project, you should kind of skim through that project and see what you can reuse and save it. And I'm always so bad about that. But power bins are there, they're really useful. They will save you hours upon hours of time per project. And that carries us into tip number three. And again, this is a technique I feel like I rarely see people use when they're editing their videos. Now I feel like this is extremely powerful for my fellow YouTube editors out there. Let's say I've got a gameplay from somebody. One of the most common edits that you'll use when you're editing some kind of gameplay or a reaction or something that has a webcam overlay on top of it is a zoom cut. And we've all seen it or done it when there's some kind of an exciting moment or somebody's reacting on cam, you cut the clip there and then you zoom in on their webcam. Now over the course of a edit or a YouTube edit, you might make this exact same cut 20 times, 30 times. 400 times, well, maybe not 400 times, but more than once probably. So what we can do is alleviate the headache of having to do this over and over by setting up a multi-cam track. Let me go ahead and undo this a couple of times. If you've edited podcasts or something with multiple camera angles, you may have seen this before, but you can use multi-cam tracks to set up edits ahead of time that you can swap to on the fly. Let me show you what I mean. On our timeline here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate our video track. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, drag that guy up. And for this entire video track, I'm gonna go ahead and apply our zoom cut to it. And let's go ahead and set up another edit on a third track. Let's zoom this in even further. And you know what? I feel like there's gonna be some sarcastic moments. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the color page for this track and I'm gonna desaturate it. And if I were to go over to the video tracks over here on the left and cycle through them, you can see we have three different versions of our video file. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this timeline to a multi-cam timeline and then bring it onto a working timeline, if you will. And let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is in our media pool, I'm gonna locate our new 1080p timeline in the media pool. And I'm actually gonna rename this to multi-cam gameplay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this timeline, go to convert timeline to multi-cam clip. Now as soon as I do that, you're gonna see we lose our timeline preview and it's actually, it swapped it out for a random timeline that I have saved. But in our media pool now, the type of file that we have here is no longer timeline, it's multi-cam. And what I can do is I can drag this multi-cam clip onto a new timeline. And at first it looks just like our original gameplay footage, but we have like a new window symbol over here and it says multicam gameplay video one, audio one. What I can do now is if I wanted to, you could either right click and hit switch multicam clip angle, or I'm gonna use the shortcut alt 
plus whatever track I want to swap to. So I'm going to do Alt 2 and we've instantly swapped to our zoom cut. Again, I can hit Alt 3 and we swap to that third angle. Now what makes this really strong is I can go through, edit this clip, right? Instead of having to go over to the inspector tab, I can just swap to my different cuts on the fly and I can really work with just one video and one audio track across the entire edit of a video. A couple things to note with this. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and edit your multicam clip or make changes or add new tracks, you can do that. You can go over to your media pool, right click and hit open in timeline. And now we have our original uh, multicam footage to work with. So again, you could go ahead and add a new track and you can even add like an effect to it. So let's go ahead and I don't know, add some kind of like blur. I don't know why you want to do that. Doesn't matter. If I go back to the timeline and now I swap to the fourth track, we have that edit to it, which makes it really nice. Now, something you may have noticed is that when I do swap to these different angles, uh, we lose our audio. And that's because if I go back to our multicam timeline, we don't have any audio on these tracks. So what you could do is you could duplicate your audio four times or do it for every track. And then that way, when you do swap to those tracks, it'll have that audio attached to it. Or what you can do is you can just copy this audio track, go to your main timeline, paste it, and then relink it to the video track. So I've pasted it and I'm gonna drag and select my multicam video and the audio and hit link clips. And now my audio is separate from the multicam clip itself. So I can go ahead and again, I can swap to those different angles and we are all good to go. A question I do get all the time when it comes to making your videos better is where can I find good copyright free music tracks that I can use for my videos? And I'm not sponsored by them, but what I use and what I recommend for everybody to use is Epidemic Sound. And the main reason I say that is because one, it just has good music. Oftentimes when you go and you look for music on copyright free sites, it just, they end up sounding uh, corny or cheesy. I feel like Epidemic has good music tracks and they also just recently brought over a lot of the Soundly library when it comes to sound effects. So, so if you're looking for whooshes or like rattles or clangs or anything like that, Epidemic also has you covered. The main reason I often recommend them is because they will auto clear all of their tracks on your socials. So you go into your profile page, link your social accounts, and then anytime you use an audio track from them, it auto clears it. You don't gotta worry about licenses or clearing things through YouTube studio, Epidemic has it covered. And again, I'm not sponsored by them, but there is an affiliate link in the description. And if you do use it, I get a little bit of a kickback. So go check it out if you want. But that leads us into our next tip, which is to use the dang keyboard shortcuts. And before you click off, cause like, God, oh, well, yeah, I already know how to cut and all that kind of stuff. I made a video on this a little while ago, but what I recommend doing for your keyboard shortcuts is to gamify them. What I mean by that is have them rest on your home row here. And the most common functions that you use when it comes to editing, map them to your home row. So for me, I have my A button map to cut. I have my S button mapped to zooming out on the timeline, my D button mapped to zooming in on the timeline, and I have F mapped to ripple delete. So when I go about editing things, I can move about the timeline pretty quick when I need to get to things that I need to get to. And as you begin to edit more, you can begin to figure out what buttons you wanna use more often than others, and you can begin to map those to buttons close to your home row. So say I'm working with a bigger sequence on the right, I can hit E to select those and move those around. Similarly, I have Q mapped to everything to the left of my playhead, so I can grab that and bring it all forward. Another useful feature is, say for instance, I'm going through and selecting parts I wanna use, I can drag and select these clips, hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And if I want to get rid of those gaps, I can drag and select those and hit Control Shift and F to delete the gaps in that footage. Generally speaking, any function that you can think of doing in DaVinci Resolve, they will have the ability to map it to a keyboard button or set of buttons. That's going to live up top in the top left here. You're going to go to DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customizations. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to find that remove gap or delete gap option. I can go over to our search bar over here and type in gap. And you can see we have our command here, delete gaps. I already have mine mapped to control shift F. Now I always recommend starting with ASD and F as cut, zoom in, zoom out, and ripple delete. But again, figure out whatever buttons you wanna use that make your life easier. If you have more questions or are looking for more guidance when it comes to editing videos or creating content, swing by the Discord. And you can also catch me live on Twitch. I do stream from time to time there, and that's always a great place for us to do video reviews and deeper dives into your editing questions.
Appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.